And Christoph? Hey, Danny. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing fine. Long time since we uh, spoke, I, uh, I guess. Are you there? I'm there. I have facing problems with the connection, obviously, but I'm back now. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah it's been a while since we have talked, so um, um, I think the invite we got here to uh, have a fireside chat about uh, the journey we did uh, together is uh, quite exciting. Uh, actually, we have never done that, actually, in a, in a sort of a post-exit evaluation. Um, so we do this now in a public setting, so it's quite interesting. Um, I know that uh, particularly you uh, uh, as uh, still be with Shell, or how, how, what is your situation now? Well, my situation is that I'm currently in, in a, a fade out. Um, I handed over already my CEO position after more than 10 years, more than 10 and a half years even. Um, to my successor on uh, October 1st. But um, until my contract ends, and I always have three years contracts um, uh, on the 10th of January, um, I will still be on board. I still have my managing director mandates and um, I'm kind of an advisor at the moment, right? Okay, cool. Feels kind of strange after so long time in the yeah. company that, that I'm, I founded. Yeah. But, but you know, if I may ask you, you know, at the time that you started the journey and, and you invited venture capital into the company, you knew that there was going to be a point at which at least the investors wanted to have an exit um, and that the next phase either was going to be, you know, going public or, um, or doing a trade sale. Um, that was always in your mind, wasn't it? Absolutely. I mean, Zonen... Um, was already my fifth startup experience and uh, none of the five startups I've, I founded and built were um, uh, meant to, to be a family business for the next five generations. Uh, um, uh, I think that starting something, being an entrepreneur, a startup entrepreneur in particular, is a kind of, of a special passion that you may have or may not have. And I mean, obviously I have it and I, I like to build something from scratch. And um, after a while, and I think for Zonen, this time has come now, it is also um, uh, good to leave and to move on and simply do something like this again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet you we all look forward to uh, your next uh, ideas and uh, initiatives. And, uh, you know, as a successful uh, uh, entrepreneur, uh, investors are ready to, um, to, um, to see what you're doing and to like we say, throw money at you. Um, <laughs> throw money at me. <laughs> I can give you my bank account later yeah. on. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. But you know, we are asked to uh, we're asked to uh, to talk about you know how it started and how uh, you know basically how it ended and you know it ended with you resigning now from uh, from Shell um, and from for us as at Set Ventures it ended a little while ago when we. Sold our share uh, shares to uh, to uh, Shell alongside all the other shareholders in the company, um, but uh, there was also a beginning of all of this um, way back when. Mm. Um, can can you, from your perspective, uh, look at that period? You know, uh, the, the, your very first investor was E Capital, uh, if I Absolutely. recollect. Uh, um, so that was the first round, and then there was a, a round in which. Um, we joined, uh, but maybe you can explain a little bit from your perspective how that, how you uh, experienced that. Sure. I mean, we started in 2010 already, um, and we were actually the first one to develop and to sell uh, residential battery storage systems. Right at this time, the entire solar industry was about feed and tariffs. Nobody thought about self-consumption of solar power, and so when we started, our problem was not so much scaling up and our problem was not so much competition either because there was no competition unfortunately there were no customers either so our problem at the beginning was rather to prove the pudding first of all to to showcase and to prove to ourselves and the rest of the world that on the one hand we are able to build um, such a system that is doing what it's supposed to do and on the other hand um, uh, being able to sell it and this was um, uh, the main challenge actually because the, 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 
the payback term of this was simply six, seven hundred years or whatsoever, no chance to earn the money back. It was so expensive in the beginning due to high um, uh, sale prices as well, that our first aim as founders was to simply prove the business model. And this is exactly what we did from the foundation of the company in 2010 until we got the first investor in in 2013. So the first three years of the company development were actually funded by ourselves, the two founders, right? And we started from, from scratch as a, as a two-man show. And um, at this time, early 2013, we had already something like 30, 35 employees and something like three, four, five million revenues, right? So at this time, we started with the first VC because simply we reached the point that we recognized, yes, it's working both the system from the technological standpoint and secondly also the market and this was the first time when we thought okay it makes sense to get uh, gross capital on board in order to um, enhance and further develop our business uh, yeah uh, cool yeah yeah i remember that time uh, actually we we had heard of zonen we from set had heard of zonen already zonen battery as it was called at that time um, uh, and uh, we, uh, we we looked at, uh, at at your case, and we couldn't, you know, make soup out of that. You know, that was you were basically a, an integrator of hardware um, uh, that uh, was trying to sell something that was way too expensive. There was no need for anybody at that time to buy a battery itself. Uh, there was no regulation around it yet that required self-consumption. Um, and the business model that you were running at that time did not believe that we did not believe that that was going to fly, um, uh, and therefore we were hesitant. And I think the the time that we uh, we, we we zoomed around Zollen was quite a while actually. Uh, you presented yourself in confer at conferences like these, uh, and and uh, you know you uh, you are uh, uh, stage hungry uh, uh, as we call it uh, for <laughs> CEOs and it's very good you know because that is the way you get connected and people understand what you're doing and uh, you build an opinion on, on you and the business um, and I remember vividly that uh, we uh, were invited on a Saturday to come to uh, Wiltport Street I'd never heard of that town uh, and I think many of the listeners have never heard of it either um, but um, and it was a fantastic experience to do that in the weekend. Um, uh, gather, you, you gathered a number of uh, potentially interested investors to really uh, see, uh, show them what you had uh, and, um, and, uh, and, and presented a company, um, which at that time uh, for me was a, a great experience, not only to, to visit uh, Bavarian, uh, which is a beautiful area in, to begin with, but also the way you structured your company, very organized, um, I would say very German um, uh, in, in, in the details uh, and, and cleanness and everything uh, was, was very, very impressive. But still, it was very hard for me to believe that there was a business to be built around an integrated system. But um, the yeah. $1 million question is, why the hell did you invest in Dunnan then? <laughs> what what was your your? your I mean, you, you must have some some criteria as an investor. So yeah. what the heck convinced you to give us your money? Yeah. And I must admit that all you said earlier is right. I mean, it's it's been a boring. I mean, kind of boring, um, system integrator business only hardware yeah. focused. So yeah, why did you do that? Well, whether it's boring or not, if you can make money with it, we, you know, we we would be able to support it. But we didn't believe that that was long term the 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 potential that you had, even though you had a, a leading start in integrating a, a, a rather complex system. Um, and and uh, I've learned over t over the years, obviously, that you have done that very very well. May have a, have a superior hardware solution. But you know, from a from a business perspective, uh, to to maintain margin control, working capital. Um, uh, not having any manufacturing components, 100% yourself, uh, put you in a put you in a vulnerable position. At least that was our thinking around the business model. But what changed us was not on the, in the first um, uh, meeting. But I, but I fell in love so much with Will Pottery that I wanted to come back, and I I uh, I, uh, I, I, I faked uh, a good reason to further look into into your company. But that I remember the presentation in which you said on slide 17. But yeah, you know what? The real business we are going to 
is going to be connecting all these devices that we have and create a virtual power plant and run that business as, as a service. And then I was sold. Uh, that was the moment that I thought, well, you know, we have to go through this stage of developing the hardware to a level that it is a consumer proposition, but it's also a basis for a services business on which you can, you know, uh, uh, build a completely different business model. And that's what flipped me. And I, I tell you, uh, Christoph, I had to convince quite some people in, in my backyard uh, to, to do that because they, they didn't see it uh, or didn't want to see it or... Uh, I made, didn't make it clear enough that that was the ultimate pur purpose of Zonen, which made it very exciting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But, and when when did you regret your decision for the first time? <laughs> well, it's always, that's always on the first board meeting, you know. <laughs> we, we call that the oh shit meeting because because then you just try and wire the money and then you're in there and then you you get the real uh, the real story, obviously, uh, because. Uh, uh, you know, then the truth really comes out. The diligence is great, but you know, it's still interpretation, and you all also have a little bit of a hang of uh, you want to do the deal by now. So uh, that would be the oh shit meeting is always the first board, board meeting, and uh, um, that. Uh, so for that, the entrepreneur, uh, by the way. Sorry. Also for the entrepreneur, by the way. So oh, I can. The, I the can oh shit meeting. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you certainly have to deal with many more people around the table. That is your uh, your supervisory board. Uh, that that all come in with expectations and, uh, and 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 backgrounds and what have you. I think managing that is not a nuisance, isn't it? No, I mean I think that this is the the oh shit meeting is simply due to the fact that the the selling phase and it's a mutual uh, selling phase is over, and suddenly you face the naked truth. Yeah. And <laughs> you don't always like what you're seeing, of course. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Once the makeup is off, you know it looks different. Um, but uh, I, I remember that we had to fight also to get in. Um, uh, you know, you you ran a, a competitive process. You know, and I'm talking about the first time we we, we got in um, a, a competitive uh, process. Um, did you do that on purpose, or was that a um, uh, you know also a, um, you know just a luxury that you had that you had multiple parties that wanted to get in? Well, I think we tried from the beginning to invest a significant amount of time in building kind of um, an investor network and, and uh, really investor relations was a key topic. At the end of the day, the aim is always, as always in life actually, to have alternatives. And this is not only to um, push the, the price or the valuation. I mean, this is an aspect as well, but the main aim of that is actually to have a choice to pick the right investor that is the right choice for the specific phase um, uh, of, of, of the company where the company is in. Yeah? And yeah. I mean, we, we always try to have uh, certain um, uh, alternatives just because of that. Yeah. And you also did that later in, in, in the fundraising eh? because you went through multiple rounds of funding. Um, yeah in which we uh, we tried to participate in all of them, uh, as I said, and uh, we did. Um, we did. Um, uh, not always at pro rata, but that wasn't necessary always. Uh, oh. and, but, but you kept on building that, uh, you know, from your perspective, you got more strategics in as well uh, at some point. Was that, um, was it also deliberate uh, or uh, what was the reason behind it for you to, uh, to, uh, to have that, uh, that, that, that bunch of uh, corporate investors in there as well? Well, I think that um, in the beginning, we tried to avoid corporate uh, investors indeed, uh, simply because of the fact that we were a little bit intimidated by just the size of the, the organizations. And if you have only 30 guys that run your business and suddenly you have uh, discussions and maybe th these are all interesting uh, discussions with corporates, we didn't want to do that, and we wanna we wanted to stay as independent as we could um, uh, in in the beginning. So focused really on on uh, the best venture capitalists um, in Europe, and then in a later stage, when the organization is bigger, and also when you have other topics at the table, you are way beyond just proving your business case. You suddenly think about. Um, uh, international scale yeah 
we went to, as you know, um, the US pretty early, then to Australia, then to Japan. And of course, corporates can help there. And once we saw um, a really a strategic edge and a possibility to, to also get help by strategic investors, it was the right time uh, for us to switch from pure financial investors, venture capitalists, um, uh, rather towards uh, corporate investors. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I fully subscribe to that. I, I you know, um, I, I remember that uh, Shell uh, also knocked on our door, uh, as I knew personally the people at Shell uh, at that time, to see whether they could get into into Zonen at an early stage. And I said, well, you know, on the board, I'm on the board of, of Zonen, and I know Christoph, and he has no appetite yet to have corporates coming in. But you know, the time will be there, so be a little bit patient, and uh, and 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 it will will happen now. I didn't know at that time that it was going to happen the way it is. It has happened, but uh, uh, it, it, you know, I, I I applauded your your position. And although uh, relatively early on you got some uh, strategic money in as well, um, that I I felt a little bit was a little bit too early. But um, at the same time, that was the money that was available. Um, and and uh, if if a corporate can 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 write relatively easy a bigger check than a financial investor in, in Europe typically can do, then that is obviously good for the company, uh, the valuation um, uh, and, and, uh, and just all the shareholders. Absolutely. I understand that it was, was needed, but, um, but it created, you know, it creates also a, a, a kind of complex shareholder base um, and, uh, and obviously a larger supervisory board with more people around the table than you wish at a Christmas party. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, although I have to say the the the, the board meetings, uh, the evenings before the board meetings became more fun. Also, because you know I remember vividly the uh, the board meeting uh, at uh, in, 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 where we met at in Kempton, and uh, we were all so incredibly drunk that evening. I don't know how you did that, but uh, you got us all drunk, and you were the only one next morning standing up and do the board meeting and. I think you got all the all your uh, resolutions through because nobody was able to say no. Um, <laughs> I had an arrangement with the waiter. He gave me alcohol-free beer, and um, my job was to make the investors drunk to have an easy board meeting the next morning. <laughs> yeah. so, no, 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 no. I'm Bavarian, you know. This is uh, like water for us. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it but, but it created a very good atmosphere with you know not only that evening but you know in general we had a very good atmosphere around the Zonan experience. You always made sure that we all were welcomed and uh, questions were always answered, which, which worked well. Um, so, uh, yeah, in that respect, uh, uh, like in every company, you have your challenges and uh, between the shareholders and the board and, uh, and, and management. And, uh, but uh, uh, I think we always were able to pick up the phone and got answers and you never uh, uh, did hide away, not even from the, the parties that, you know, were diluting a little bit uh, because, you know, you raised money and you got... Um, and, and, and we got our share uh, in it at, at large uh, uh, shrunk uh, uh, to a smaller amount. Absolutely. So I, really I think this is also, from the point of view of the, the entrepreneur, a very important selection criteria for the investors to join, actually, that you have also nice people you, you, you like to work with, right? Absolutely. Nobody yeah. wants to work with, I mean, idiots or people you dislike. Huh? This is not fun. And... Um, you would never ever hire such a guy as an employee, but same for an investor. You you don't want to work with somebody, and you know from the beginning that you have a certain volatility in the business, and of course you have also critical situations, and yeah. you simply want people at your side that you like, and this yeah. is ex extremely important as well, yeah. especially if you have um, difficult discussions. Yeah. So with a few more minutes left, I think. Uh, uh, we, we, the subject was from uh, from uh, start to sell to shell. Um, um, maybe we can touch on that a little bit. Um, um, the, the the real um, exit obviously was was driven by opportunity, but also by a desire from some of the shareholders to uh, to sell the company. Is that the way you experience it as as well? Um, uh, and and simply to find also a better house for the company. Uh, on its growth path going forward. Um. Yeah, I mean, um, we rose um, at Zonen, um, as you know, around 180 million euros over the time. Yeah, and the 
the capital need of Sonnen was driven by actually two things. First of all, we should not forget that we are a hardware business and only the, the financing of the warehouse working capital yeah, is a two digit million amount and still it is. Uh, I mean, this is incredible. And then we um, are internationalizing and every country market you, you enter, especially if you talk about overseas markets like the US, like Australia, where we have factories as well. Yeah, This requires a lot of capital and simply for um, the next phase of Sonnen, which means aggressive scale and continuation of the international scaling um, as well and internationalization requires a lot of capital. And this is one thing. And the other thing is also that Shell is, a, is a, an extremely good partner because they have infrastructures in all the countries we want to go in. They have very similar core markets as, as we do. And there are also other portfolio companies um, with a lot of synergy potential with uh, Zonin. So I think for the next growth phase of the business um, and evolvement phase of the business, this is really the right move to take. Yeah, I think that the timing uh, of the, the exit uh, uh, from our perspective, at least from an early sh shareholder perspective, um, and and um, and obviously the the sort of uh, um, acquirer being Shell in this this uh, case was excellent because the what the energy market is lacking is basically worldwide players and and uh, the typical ut energy utilities are not worldwide players they are big but they are big in their own regions and Shell uh, and other uh, companies like Shell are, are have a reach far beyond the uh, the boundaries of uh, a certain country or even a continent. And that, that helps you really become a de facto uh, player uh, worldwide. Uh, and in your business, you have to fight that on, on, on scale and, and, and make that work. So um, I think that, uh, you know, for us as well, uh, even though we liked the journey and uh, we, I enjoyed every uh, interaction with you and with the company, um, I also liked the exit, um, uh, to be honest. <laughs> the, the force also worked out well, um, but... Um, it was it was for all parties the right moment to do it, even though uh, you could also imagine to just to continue to invest and, and keep growing the company independently. But that that in uh, that would have been a, an expensive and hard to finance uh, endeavor going forward. So being part of Shell, I think, was the right thing to do. Absolutely. Yeah. OK, Christoph, uh, I think we uh, are at the end of uh, what we have uh, uh, time available for this fire uh, uh, sites chat. I, I, I wish we could do it really at, at the fire site. Um, I wish to come down to Wilford Street uh, 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 soon again um, and, uh, and, and, and drink a beer and uh, enjoy that. But Corona will prevent it a little bit, but we'll keep it in mind, I hope. Absolutely. We'll do it as soon as we can. Thank you very much, Renier, for everything. Thank you very much, and uh, good luck in your next uh, next ventures. We'll hear from you. Thank you. Absolutely. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.